sketch every day, said by some artist or art teacher somewhere. This is a quote that I hear all the time, but I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm sure drawing daily is a fantastic practice, but I think a sketchbook should be something more, a witness of what you're experiencing, scribbling them whenever they happen. With that being said, I haven't done a great job in the last year of keeping a sketchbook. But I do think keeping a sketchbook can be really important as an artist. Artist Solowit said it best when he said scribbles, sketches, drawings, failed work, anything really that shows the thought process of the artist are sometimes more interesting than the final product. In order to get myself excited about sketching, I decided it might be cool to hand make my own sketchbook. But before I do that, I thought it would be fun to go back in time and take a look at my past sketchbooks. I have been drawing most of my life, and so I have a lot of sketchbooks. This one I started with was from about 2010. I was a freshman in high school. And funny enough, nature still, way back then, played a large role in what I was creating. I liked making up little creatures like this cattail bird, um, or just drawing animals like, like a toad. This next sketchbook was also from high school. I think this is from my senior year, but I really liked drawing in an illustrative style. Shout out to my good friend Isaiah, who's in that right hand corner on the top. And not only did I practice kind of illustration, but I also liked messing around with graphite and charcoal, like in this hiking scene and studying other artists. Like I believe this is Frank Frazetta. This next sketchbook is also a sketchbook from the tail end of high school. And in this first one here, I was just practicing some still life drawing of my cat. I also learned I really liked sketching in red pencil for some reason. On this page, I'm again also experimenting with an illustration style and another Frank Frazetta study. So finally, out of high school, this sketchbook is my first sketchbook in community college. And this is a sketch of a white heron I used to see all the time commuting to school. And the second one here is a thumbnail drawing of a bigger drawing I did for a drawing class. And again, some mountains. I'm always drawing mountains. So this next sketchbook is really cool because it's the one that has inspired me to again hand make a sketchbook. This one was just hand bound in yarn uh, and it was for school again. And it's mostly just quick illustrations, a quick uh, introduction to collage, which was fun. I think I'll maybe incorporate that into my new sketchbook. This is another sketchbook from community college um, for a sculpture class. Sculpture really opened my eyes to what I could make as an artist. Again, I was incorporating a little bit of collage, um, some drawings of minimalist sculptures that have still to this day really inspired me. And this page uh, is my first time in four-year college for public sculpture. This sketchbook as well is my very beginning uh, into my bachelor's degree studies. This drawing in particular is one of my favorite. It was just a one-off for fun sketch, but I've always said if I was gonna write a book or illustrate a book, it would be in that style. This is a sketch of just uh, some kind of fantastic trees. I'm always drawing trees and nature. Kind of learned that going through these sketchbooks. This is another sketchbook from college. This was for a printmaking class. Although I'm not a printmaker, um, this class, I really started to experiment in what my personal artistic style would be as far as um, subject matter, ancient history and nature, that sort of thing. And we're almost done here. This sketchbook is the last sketchbook 
I finished. And I think by this time, I've already graduated and I'm just sketching for fun here. This is just another illustrative style, actually of a scene from Washington where I went hiking. Some more illustrations, nothing too fancy. These are just ideas that pop into my head and I decided to give them a, give them a sketch in the sketchbook. A campfire in a dark forest. Again, I would, if I was gonna write a book or illustrate a book, I think that's the style I'd go for. Now, this is my current sketchbook, and it's not necessarily a sketchbook, more so an idea book. Uh, since I graduated, I kind of transitioned from not really knowing what I wanted to do to doing a lot of conceptual art, sculpture, even some painting. So that's what this sketchbook is. In this sketchbook, I kind of written down all my instructions to help me complete projects for my portfolio, help me organize ideas and flesh out concepts. And that's about it. So this new sketchbook is going to be a lot like this hand-stitched one that I did in college. And I think it's just about time to get started making it. And this is what I've come up with. A sketchbook that is six by eight inches with seven holes down the side for the binding. It's gonna be a take on the stab stitch method from Japan. So for the paper, I ordered four sheets of 22 by 30 Stonehenge Legion mixed media paper. I got a cream color, a white color, one called Fawn, and one called Craft. And my idea was that adding some variation to the sketchbook every time you turn the page uh, might help with some of the creativity that goes into the book. After doing the math, I figured I can get about 44 sheets of paper to go into the sketchbook for a total of 88 front and back. The sketchbook ended up actually only being 36 pages at the end of the day for a total of 72 pages front and back. And that's because after a full day of measuring with my ruler and cutting with my X-Acto knife, I uh, accidentally cut wrong on the very, very last page. So I have a few pages that didn't go in the sketchbook, but don't worry, I'm saving them. I'm going to use them for projects in the future. My next step of this project was creating the cover. And I'm using this really thick piece of chipboard that I actually stole off the back of a drawing pad I had already used up. So at this point I realized because this was basically a hard cover, I needed to create some sort of hinge. I watched a few videos on how to do this but this actually was just going to be my practice round on creating this. So I'm just using some glue and brushing it onto some tracing paper. And you can see there that I've cut off a portion of the spine that once the tracing paper is glued on, that little gap is gonna act as the hinge. While making this cover, I was working really quickly because like I said, I didn't know what I was doing and so I thought this would be my practice round. The tracing paper was constantly wrinkling up and buckling and it didn't seem like it was turning out the way I wanted.
after it started to dry, the wrinkles actually started to stretch back out. And I was actually really happy with the way this turned out. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep this. So I jumped into the second cover and I learned from my mistakes, especially watering down the glue, and I went for it. The next step of this project, and probably the most time consuming, was poking holes in every single page. And this just gives it the name, Stab Stitch Binding. I even had to do it twice because I realized the holes I did the first time weren't big enough for stitching. Now I'm in the home stretch of creating this sketchbook, the stitching portion, and this was probably the most fun I've had in this project. I'm not really in any position to teach how to create this stitch, but I did follow some really awesome videos I found on YouTube that I will leave in the description. But basically, I'm stitching around the spine and then zigzagging my way through the holes. And all really helped me puncture the holes as I was going through the process of stitching. And the thread I'm using actually came with that awl that I've had for like three years. It's a waxed thread. And since I started the stitching in the middle of the book, I was able to finish up with the knot right there. So there we go, my very own handbound sketchbook. And I am actually going to keep using this left sketchbook. I'm calling it my idea sketchbook for doodles, ideas for bigger projects and concepts. But this sketchbook I want to use especially for any original, no strings attached, gouache, charcoal, drawing, anything I want. Um, hopefully each page will be its own little piece of artwork. And I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I think the page colors and the deckled edges really add to the aesthetic that I was going for. And off camera, I did add in this black construction paper backing to the covers. And I think that just makes it look a little more nice, a little more formal. In the future, I think I'd like to maybe do another sketchbook tour of the progress of this book. And who knows, maybe uh, when it's all finished, it'll be part of my portfolio. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.